Hi everyone and welcome to Messy Church. It's great to be together. Let's go inside and see what we're going to do today. I wonder how many friends you have. Do a quick count in your head. Our friends are really important and special. It's great to meet with them and play with them and have fun together and talk together. Now, Jesus had lots of friends, loads of them, but one day he chose 12 of them to be his special friends, his closest friends, and we call them the 12 disciples. They traveled around with Jesus. They heard his amazing teaching and they saw the wonderful things that he did in healing and helping people. Now, do you remember at last Messy Church, we thought about one of those disciples and his name was Peter. Now, when Peter was born, his mum and dad gave him the name Simon. But Jesus said he was going to call him Peter. And the word Peter means rock. I have brought a rock along. It's really solid and strong. And actually, it's quite heavy. When we build something, we need to build on a rock so it has a really good foundation. I wonder why Jesus, therefore, gave Peter the name The Rock. That's what we're going to be thinking about today. We've now got a really exciting activity to show how we build on good foundations. I wonder, can you spot any of your friends there? Okay, Emily and Martha, you're going to have one minute, one minute to build the tallest tower that you can, okay? With, with the stuff that we talked about and that you've collected. Are you ready for yeah. the challenge? So, Alexa, set a one minute timer. One minute, starting now. Go! Oh, Emily, you're going to have to start again. That's it. Keep building. Oh, Emily. I knew this. Oh, Martha, those books look heavy. You're giggling too much. Right, come on. Keep going. Get any more pillows around. That. There's some more pillows around if you look. Oh! <laughs> Emily, yours has fallen down again. You need to start again. This is a nightmare. I don't want to go any better. Oh, stop! Emily hasn't got a towel. <laughs> right. Alexa, stop. I think we can see who's got the tallest tower. Me! Well done, Martha. Bad luck, Emily. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the building activity that we've just done. It seems that to build a strong tower, you need firm foundations as strong as a rock. And that leads into our story for today, about Peter. Do you remember the Messy Church story last month? We were on a beach with Peter and his friends after Jesus had been crucified and had been made alive again. We heard how a week after, while they were waiting and wondering what would happen next, they went fishing. This was something they knew about and they felt safe doing it. But even though they knew the best places to fish, they caught nothing. And then someone from the lakeside told them to try the other side of the boat. They did as he said and straight away caught a massive load of fish. Peter realized at once that the person calling to them was Jesus. 
He was so excited. He jumped into the lake and ran towards Jesus as fast as he could. But as Peter ran, he must have been a bit worried as well as excited because he had a secret. He knew that he had let Jesus down. How? Well, let's find out. We have to go back to the time before Jesus was crucified, when Jesus was arrested at night by armed men. All Jesus' friends ran away, except for Peter, who secretly followed him and the soldiers to a courtyard. Our story today takes us to where Jesus is being held, waiting to be questioned, with Peter watching on. If I sit here in the shadows, I can see what's going on. What are they going to do to Jesus? I don't want anyone to see me. Well, it's not safe. Well, it's cold. I'll move nearer to the fire. Hello, cold, isn't it? Did you see them bring that man Jesus in? Hold on a minute. I'm sure I saw you with him and some of his friends earlier earlier today. Yes, you were with him. No, no, I don't know. Never met him. Hello, keep it warm. Are they waiting to see what happened to him when he's taken inside? You're one of his friends, aren't you? Of course I'm not. I'm not a friend of that man. And then almost an hour later he was challenged again. Ah, you're one of his followers. You're from the same place, aren't you? I can tell by your accent. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course I'm not one of his followers. I do not know the man. <coughs> Just as he was speaking, a cock crowed and Peter remembered what he had promised to Jesus only a few hours ago. Jesus, I'm ready to go to prison with you and even die for you. And Jesus had replied, Peter, before the cock crows three times tomorrow morning, you will say you never knew me. From across the courtyard, Jesus looked sadly at Peter. So let's come forward again to where we were last time, eating that breakfast on the lake shore, with Peter standing by a different fire when Jesus cooked some fish that Peter and the others had caught. Peter knew how badly he had let Jesus down. How could he have said he didn't even know him? I wonder how the conversation went. Peter, do you love me more than your friend here? Yes, Lord, you know I do. I really do. And take care of those who want to follow me. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I do. Take care of those who are lost, who want to follow me. Do you love me? You know everything, Jesus. You know I love you. I'm giving you the job of looking after my followers. So follow me yourself. Did you notice Jesus asked Peter the same question three times? It's the same number of times that Peter had said he did not know Jesus in the courtyard. This is not a mistake. Jesus was doing something really important when he asked Peter three times if he loved him. Jesus knew that Peter still thought about the time when he lied three times and said that he did not know him. Jesus knew that Peter needed to know that Jesus loved him just as much as he did before he let him down. After this conversation with Jesus, Peter could start again and go on as a follower of Jesus, knowing that Jesus loved him and had forgiven him. He would never say he did not know Jesus ever again.
In fact, he would go on to be a very important person who helped to build the church. He would go on to be as strong as a rock, strong enough for God to build his church upon. We will hear more about Peter the Rock in the next Messy Church, but for today, let us remember that Peter found out that he could always turn to Jesus, even when he had made some mistakes. And so can we. This is the foundation of what we believe. Hello everyone. I'm going to show you how to make a handprint that you can use to help you when you're praying at home, either on your own or with the rest of your family. It can remind you as you pray of all the different people that you've met, know and love. Next, a sheet of white paper for my print and either a lid or a tray covered in paint. This is the top of an old ice cream tub. I've also added some washing up liquid, which gives my handprint a really thick texture. Once I've covered my lid in lots and lots of paint, I put my hand very firmly, but gently into the paint and I swirl it around as much as I can, covering it as I do so, and as much paint as I can find. Once I've done that, and I'm sure that I've got lots and lots of paint on my fingers, I'm going to lift them up very carefully. And if I don't think I've got quite enough paint, I put it back in and make sure this time that it's got even more paint on it. Once I feel that there's enough paint on, I'll lift it up again. And this time I splay my fingers so that I can see the gaps between each finger ready for my print. Then carefully, I lift my hand and gently place it onto the paper like so. I often put my other hand on top of my hand and gently but carefully touch each finger in order to make a better print. Once I feel that it's ready, I put my other hand back onto the paper to keep it still as I lift my hand covered in paint off the paper like so. And underneath, I discover my handprint. You can then leave this to dry. And if you want, you can also make some more handprints for the rest of your family. I made some earlier and on them, I've used different colours. You can do the same. Once your handprint is dry, it's ready to be cut out. Carefully cut between each finger and then around your thumb to make your handprint. It's now ready for you to use as you pray. Your thumb closest to your heart reminds you to pray for those closest to you, your family and your friends. The pointer finger, as it's so called, leads you in a direction of life. And here we think of people who've helped you through the journey as you travel through life. We remember and pray for doctors, nurses, teachers, dentists, and any other people who help to keep us healthy and well. The middle finger, the tallest finger of all, reminds us of tall buildings. It reminds us of the church. We can pray for church leaders, 
for the government of the country. Our fourth finger, better known as the ring finger, is the weakest. And here we remember and pray for the poor, the sick and those in need of help. The final finger, the smallest one, is ourselves. We can pray to take care and to keep us safe, especially at this time. Our handprint can help us to pray in many ways, to remember and remind us of all the different people that help to make our lives safe, healthy and happy. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. When there's hard times, or there's good times, when the rain falls, or the sun shines, when you test me, or you bless me, my resolve will nonetheless be. I will love you, come what may, I will follow you every day. I will love you now and forevermore.
So as we've heard today, Peter wasn't perfect, but Jesus forgave him and never gave up on him. We're special because Jesus also forgives us and never ever gives up on us. When we have that as the foundation of our lives, then we are really blessed. So I hope you've enjoyed today's Messy Church. We have some activities, so watch out for them. There's a quiz and some exciting challenges. And we really look forward to seeing you all next time. God bless. Bye for now.